Yeah, hello, Mario. Um, from time to time, I've been getting asked uh, all sorts of things about bearings and degrees, minutes, and seconds. And it seems to me that people sort of use these terms but don't really understand them. So, this is my sort of attempt to try and simplify things, um, if that's at all possible, and to try and explain what they all mean. Now, basically what we're talking about is measuring angles or how much turn there is from, if we have an angle, how much turn there is from there to there. And what, what we use is degrees, minutes and seconds. But what are these degrees, minutes and seconds? And what, what, what how do we appreciate them or get a handle on them or visualize them well I think most people I talk to and I hear it quite a lot on TV and TV shows um, all know what a 360 is on their skateboard or on their bike oh he did a full 360 they say and they appreciate that that's sort of when you start at one point and you turn around and come back to where you started from that's a, a full 360 and well, you know, it all starts with this circle, and there's 360 degrees in a circle. So if you start looking what we know to be north, when we're talking about bearings, and then you turn yourself all the way around so that you're facing back to where you started again, that you've turned through 360 degrees. And these are a measure of the terms of the, the amount of turn, 360 degrees. So, you know, people say to me, ask me, well, why would they use 360 degrees? Why why 360? That's a bit of an odd number. Well, as it turns out, it's, it's not too bad of a number because it can be divisible by a lot of other numbers. So, if we take our 360 degrees, we can cut it into four and we can get four lots of 90 degrees which most of us know is what we call a right angle or you know that's the square or the corner of a building 90 degrees right angle and then we can cut those right angles in half uh, 45 degrees each and we can get eight of those in a circle um, there's also lots of other divisions that will split up into this 30 degree lot so we can get three of those in a right angle there's 45 and then we can get 60 degree lots, we can get six of them in a full 360. So 360 is like a very good number because it's divisible by a lot of other numbers. So that sort of gives you a bit of a handle on what we're talking about with these degrees. Now then it comes to bearings and bearings are the amount of turn from generally from north. So if we put everything facing north, which is you know, largely where the sun is at midday in the highest point of the day, that's sort of north, and then we measure the amount of turn from north to some direction, um, that, that's a bearing. So we can have our bearings from north all the way around to 360. 360 and north are actually the same. And we give these these what we call the directions or the cardinal directions north, east, south and west and then in between those north, east, south, east, south, west and north, west. Now we could also um, have what we call a 180 which is where we turn we were facing north turn 180 degrees and we'll be looking the exact opposite direction which is south so or we can be looking east turn 180 degrees and looking in the exact opposite direction west and similarly as you can see there on the little diagram I've got that uh, north east the exact opposite of that southwest and and so on and in fact every bearing um, has that so we measure bearings from north to Nought at nought degrees, and we measure the whole angle all around to the direction. So, the one that I've got there is 200 degrees 15 minutes 30. So, we 
go from north all the way around. Now, also, I mean, we could be looking 200 degrees 1530 and do a 180, and we'd be looking 20 degrees 1530. So bearings are just um, a measurement of the amount of turn from north. And then we can do a whole lot of things with these bearings because um, if we want to point someone in a particular direction we can give them a bearing and they can travel all the way along that bearing and then we could give them a distance so they know where to stop from where they started. So go 200 degrees 15 minutes 30, that tells you where to go, for 427.623 metres, that's going to give you a pretty exact sort of spot but then it gets a bit complicated what the hell are these degrees well we've handled minutes and seconds well each degree is divided up into 60 minutes and each minute is divided up into 60 seconds just like time really but and there is a relationship between this and time but it's beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. So if you can imagine your little tiny, and this is the marvellous thing of the, the surveyor's theodolite, if you can imagine your little tiny school protractor or a 360 degree protractor, it's no bigger, only 75 mils across. And usually they're divided up into 360 degrees. And each degree is roughly, um, you know, around about a millimetre. Now, each one of those millimetres is divided into 60 seconds, so 60 minutes. So that's divided into 60. And each one of those, so each one of those little millimetres is divided, or millimetres of width on your protractor, is divided by 3,600 to find out what a second is. Now, if you put in squeeze your fingers tightly together you've probably find on that basis that a, a, a second is the, the the gap between them it's not very much so how do we get a handle on how big these degrees and minutes and seconds are well how big is a degree well we all know that the circumference of a circle is a distance around the outside of the circle it's called the circumference we should know that. And we have a formula for that which is 2 pi r. 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle. Now if we divide that 2 pi r by 360, that'll give us 1 degree or how, how, how big 1 degree is. But that's not a lot of help to us. That doesn't help. So what I thought I'd do is say, well how big is the circle where one degree is one centimetre. So that's one centimetre, you know, we can all visualise that, it's possibly about the thickness of your thumb. And um, how big is the circle? Well, I've done a little calculation here, and we've got 0 0.01, which is a centimetre, in metres, and that must be equal to 2 pi r divided by 360. So the only thing we need to... Um, we need to find out there is R. So 0 0.01 times 360 is 3.6. That's equal to 2 pi R. So R must be equal to 3.6 divided by 2 pi. And that's equal to 0 0.573. 0 0.573. So if you hold your thumb, what that means is if you hold your thumb at roughly a distance of 0 0.573 meters from your eye, that the the angle from your eye to each side of your thumb, that would be roughly one degree. And there'd be 360 of those degrees side by side if you went round in a circle. So that's all very well, that's a, that's a degree, it's like one centimetre at um, half half to just over half a metre. But what about these blimmin' um, minutes and seconds? So 
let's do the same calculation for the old second. How big is the circle where one second subtends? Now that's a fancy technical term for, you know, the, that we use in mathematics. Subtends one centimetre. Um, well, one circle, as we know, 360 degrees. 360 degrees times 60, that would be the number of minutes in a circle. And that's 21,600 uh, minutes. Now, just moving on a little bit there, just for working ahead for another calculation we're going to do. If we multiply that uh, to 21,600 by 60, that'll give us the number of seconds in, a, in the, all the way around a circle, which is, as it turns out, um, that number that I've got there, which is... 1,296,000 seconds. So there's 1,296,000 seconds in a circle. Jeez, I not even I knew it was that big. Now that I say it, that's huge. We've got our little tiny school protractor that we were looking at there, 0.75 of a metre, and it's divided up into 1 million 296,000 parts to get us a second. So anyway, th that's bloody marvellous how accurate those one second wild theodolites are. By jingos, they're blooming good. So, um, yeah, so let's do the calculation. And uh, one centimetre would equal to 2 pi r over 221,600. I'm even having trouble saying these numbers, they're so big. We work through that, calculate that out. That's 34.377 metres. So if you could hold your finger or your thumb 34.377 metres from your face, that would be one second, one minute, sorry, one minute. So, you know, one minute is a, a centimetre at about 34, 35 metres away. Um, yeah, it's starting to get a bit of a hand it. But this second... How big is the circle where one second subtends a centimetre? Well, this is where the 1,296,000 divisions of our tiny little school protractor come into play. And um, we work through there and we find that in this case here, that if one second would be a centimetre at 2,062.648 metres, so... It, this is one centimetre at two kilometres. So we can, looking with our with our thing, if we look first to a point two kilometres away, and then we look one centimetre just either side of that, that would be how much turn it would be for one second. Now you think about these women, one second wild theodolites, they are able to measure to the nearest second. How mar what a marvellous piece of machinery they must be to be able to, to determine the amount of turn that you would get one centimetre at two kilometres away. So these, I think we can get from this that a second is a very small, very small amount of turn. And that some of the instruments and gear that we use is extremely accurate and it can measure down to the down to these very small amounts of turn it's blooming marvelous that's all i can say